Welcome to the Catamount Football Show with Coach Matt Land. I'm Bill Mayo, and on this week's show, we're going to take a look back at last Friday night's game with Southeast and talk a little bit about this week's playing game with the Pickens County Dragons. So stay right here. We'll be back with more Catamount Football after these messages. Got car problems? That's no problem for AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. Bring your foreigner domestic vehicle into AAA Transformers and have our certified master technicians perform the most comprehensive diagnostics over any other shop. AAA Transformers utilizes the latest technology so you can rest assured that you get the proper diagnosis the first time so only necessary repairs are made. Save time and money on all your brake, AC, tune-up, and transmission needs. All backed by the best warranty in the business. That's AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. When is the last time you have compared your car, life, or health insurance cost? At Advanced Insurance Strategies, we know your time is valuable. Therefore, we have developed AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. You can now go online anytime, anywhere, and get quick and easy quotes for your car, life, or health insurance from respected companies such as Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia, Assurant Health, Alliant Health Plans, and Drive Insurance from Progressive. Receive unparalleled customer service from a local insurance agency while using AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. Welcome back to Catamount Football and Coach Land. Talk a little bit about the game last Friday night. It was uh, uh, certainly an, an interesting game. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think got to give Southeast a lot of credit for the game plan to shorten the game. I mean, that game was Absolutely. almost played literally in real time. The clock was running and it was. really limited the number of possessions we had. Uh, talk about it a little bit. Well, I, I thought Coach Gray had an outstanding game plan. Uh, and, and just as I tip my hat to him, I tip my hat to those young men. I mean, we've gone back and watched the film and – uh, just saw a lot of kids uh, on their side of the ball that was just playing their hearts out and a lot of kids playing both ways. Flip side of the coin, I got to tip my hat to our coaches and to our players. Uh, we, we faced a, a, a couple of situations that were uh, that <laughs> were a little bit dire maybe at times because you, know, you, you think about the fact that we were basically without four linemen, one wide receiver, and some depth due to the flu this week, and those guys were not even playing. So we played that game without five of our starters or at least players that are in our rotation. I know I looked out and, there one time and three-fifths <laughs> of our starting offensive line is lined up on the defensive line. That's right, and we were, we were counting plays. You know, right. I remember looking at Hayden Gross and we ran Hayden out there, and I remember going, okay, there's his seventh play. He's got one more play and then he's off and we had another guy rotate. So, you know, the coaches did an outstanding job last week putting together uh, the team that we were going to have uh, to be able to go to play because we knew pretty much once a kid gets out with the flu, he's gone for three or four days, and if he does come back like Marlo, Marlo came back on Thursday and just never, just still didn't have his strength. So uh, my, my hat's off to Southeast, and I definitely don't want to take anything from them, but I'm so proud of our boys that were there, our boys that suited up to play, and uh, you know we had probably seven guys on the field that played positions they had not played before that game, and, uh, or at least extensively for reps. So I was very, very proud of them. I have to kind of confess, uh, and I'll probably apologize a little bit maybe, not, not a lot, but maybe a little bit to the team. Uh, going back and looking the, at the film, uh, I, I was very disappointed Friday night with our football team. I was very disappointed with the way that we, I felt like we had played at times and certain things. But when I went back and looked at the film, uh, there was a lot of good parts of that film. And the average fan's not going to see it, uh, but, but you know we'll get into it at quarterback club and, and show it when we're looking at it. Big things, we're going to show it to the kids. Uh, we did some things inside that, that game that were some adjustments uh, to what they had to adjust to, because that was the thing. We both were playing completely new game plans. Um, you know, they lost a couple of guys early on, and we lost them. 
I could argue I think it may have made them better, not because they lost those kids, but I felt like it probably put them in a situation where they had to do something to us that we've just not proven this year we're very good at stopping. Right. So, And that may have been their game plan all along. We won't know. Uh, but uh, like I said, very proud of our young men, proud of our coaches. Thought our fans did an outstanding job. A couple of plays there, we'll look back and say those were maybe plays for the ages. Uh, but at the end of the day, team win, team victory, and uh, we look forward this week to a new opponent. Well, once again, the the uh, the kicking game seems to be really progressing. We had that we had the one uh, era on on roughing the punter, but uh, but over. Otherwise, overall, very solid kicking game Friday night. Well, and, and let's just take that one play for just example because that is the most <clears throat> glaring. Uh, that was not a block. It was an effort play. Right. I just basically told those three guys, go in there, ensure the punt. Uh, if they could get to it, get to it. Robert really thought that he was going to be able to get to it. And, you know, I can't make a is – a, is that a stupid penalty? Absolutely it is. But the effort that a Robert Hardaway gives us on Friday night – I can't argue his effort on that, and uh, you know he was trying to get in there and make a play, uh, and, uh, and and like I said, the, the angle that he was coming, it was pretty much unavoidable. Plus, it was pretty good acting as well. I think we saw in the film. But yeah, our, our kicking game's coming along. We've got a, you know, this is one of the greatest years we've had as far as kickers. We've got five guys that can kick the ball from various points on the field. They all have different things that they do. I've very, been very pleased with our coverage. I think, though, where we've really matured a lot, and we can kind of go back over the last couple of years of what we've been trying to achieve, is that is a good return game. I was going to say, in the last couple of weeks, the return game has, has, has played out big. We had the kickoff return last week, and then Brandon Dale makes a, a great punt return this week that really set up that last touchdown. It's a gamble because you, you take some of your better – ball handlers and you put them back there and you're basically increasing the chance of an injury because of the fact you're increasing the length of the hit. I mean, the guy's got a 40-yard run. It's not like he's coming up from the spur. You know, he, he's coming down with his kickoff or punt. Uh, but uh, these guys have done an outstanding job and, and, and I would probably be quick to, to congratulate, as I'm sure the returners were, uh, would our, our blocking has been outstanding. Uh, the, the way that we had the kickoff return against Heritage was exactly the way we drew it up. And if you go back and look at it, you can basically lay it up as a template. The, it's perfect. And, and uh, so these guys, they take pride in their jobs. It's what we said all along. It's what we preach. Special teams and special kids. You know, it means that when you come out there, we, we're going to expect a little bit more out of you than just, just going out there and, and, and doing the best. We actually need you to do your best, and we got to have some execution. So whether it's blocking, kicking, returning, uh, you know, the, the, the defense part of it, uh, I've been very, very pleased. Very, very pleased. And, and make, make no mistake, we've got some guys that have been kind of career special teams guys, hadn't found the right place <clears throat> fit maybe on offense or defense, but they're invaluable on no, those special teams. No doubt. And, you know, you had two a couple of weeks ago, Jerry Marino and Marvin Hill. You know, that, that's two of the most unselfish players that I've been around mm -hmm. in, in my 20 years of being here. And, and you know, it, to, to look at those kids and see the, how vital and critical they are to our Friday nights, and not just, like you say, not just running the ball behind, uh, behind a, a Kelvis or, or whatever it might be, but just the reality of just knowing that, you know, it's dependable. We know those guys are going to take their job serious on special teams. So we're very hats off to those guys. Uh, another one is Kerry Deals. Kerry Deals has just done an outstanding mm -hmm. job this year. Uh, and, uh, and Cleve Hall. I mean, that's been four guys that, that we've just really, really been proud of this year. All right, very good. We'll take a quick break. We come back with more Dalton football in just a minute. AstroTurf is grateful to have been a part of this community over the last 40 years. And as Whitfield County has grown, AstroTurf has grown to be the leader worldwide in synthetic sports surfaces. Our assistance with the area parks and the new AstroTurf arena will hopefully show the community our appreciation. Soft, safe, and the most durable technology available today, AstroTurf. It's a new generation. This is not your father's AstroTurf. We're back on Catamount Football, and we've got our players of the game segment. Guys, welcome to the show. Introduce yourselves, please. I'm Edder Mora. I'm a sophomore, number 11. 
play safety, outside linebacker, wide receiver, fullback, punter, and kicker. My name is Hayden Gross. I'm number 55. I'm a sophomore and I play left guard. All right, editor, let's start with you. With that, with that kind of litany of positions you left out, you're kind of like the Swiss Army knife for this football team, aren't you? You've got open up this one. We need a kicker over here. Or we need a safety over here. Or we need a, a, a fullback. Talk about playing those multiple positions and how you have to de uh, deal with all that during the, during the course of the practice week. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm up for anything in any way that I can help my, my teammates win the game. But uh, you just, uh, we have special, like, uh, the way we practice is sometimes we, we have defensive priority and then offensive priority. So it gives me a chance to work both, uh, both ways and, and not affect it in, the, in defense or offense. How about, how about kind of shifting gears when you're in the middle of the game and you're out there playing defense and all of a sudden we, you know, we flip over to offense, whether we get a turnover or they punt or whatever, and you've got to shift gears now, go from, go from being an outside linebacker to being a fullback or, or being a wide receiver. How do you, how's, that, how's that different uh, little bit mentality of, the, of those different sides of the ball? Well, on defense, you just try to create turnovers, and offense, you uh, get some points, but Nothing, nothing changed for me. I just always continue to play aggressive. Right. Ty, talk to me about the kicking part. That's one thing that um, don't give a lot of attention to, but, but you've done a great job with the, with the kicking aspect of your game as well. Talk about that. Well, as a, as a punter, you try, to get, you try to punt as far as you can, obviously, so you can uh, put yourself in a better position for, for defense. And as I play a defense, I, I can guarantee you that if I don't give a great punt, I'll be mad with the punter. So <laughs> I, I make sure that uh, I, I give a great punt. Talk about the fake punt a couple of weeks ago. That, that really didn't look like that was a uh, – as much as Co Coach Land wanted to take credit for that fake, I think that was something that you kind of improvised right there. Talk, talk about that play a little bit about what happened. Uh, well, the snap was a little bit high, so he gave me a chance to look up. And uh, the defense just bailed, and there was only one guy pressuring – but I had my personal protector, and I knew Ethan was going to hit him. So I mean, I just I just ran. Yeah, it worked out great, didn't it? Yeah. Perfect timing oh, during yeah. the game. How about you've had you've had uh, pick, picked off a couple of passes here recently? Talk about those a little bit. Well, I mean, I you just got to go to your zone and find the person in your zone. And uh, if you if you feel like you can make the cut before before it gets to the player, then you got to make a play. What What are you reading when you're back there? I mean, talk, for somebody that doesn't. Play, had, maybe didn't play football in a long time or never played. Talk about what you're kind of kind of reading that when you cut under that out pattern uh, and made that interception a week or two ago. That, that was a perfect read of that quarterback. Kind of take people through that progression and what you see and what you did. Well, you uh, it's kind of like <laughs> I play high low. So if if I'm from intermediate to a flat player, then I have to cover first the intermediate player so I can give up the fl the flats. And not give up the the high, the high route. So it's it's. I knew I had the other guy covered, and I when he started loading up, then I knew he was going to pass to the flat player because he was the only guy opened. All right. Well, very good. Well, thanks for everything you do. Uh, great game this past week as well. All right, Hayden. Let's talk to you now. You're you're a, a sophomore as well. A young guy playing offensive line. Tell me about that. How's that? How has that been for you? That's. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit biased toward offensive linemen, but uh, that's one of the toughest positions to play and, and being a young guy, uh, dealing with the mental aspect as well as the physical part of it. Talk about it. Well, it was tough at first, and then I got a lot of experience at camp, and I just worked really hard at it, and I wanted to start, so I really pushed myself to get the starting position. What's been the, what's been the toughest adjustment for you, do you think, or been the toughest thing to learn? Um, just all the plays and different adjustments and changing like the defensive fronts. Just adjusting to those. Talk, I mean, talk about that a little bit. What happens up front? You know, you see, in the course of the game, sometimes we'll have teams they'll line up three or four or five different ways on us, uh, and you guys up front have got to be able to adjust to that and 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 deal with it, right? Well, we go over them in practice usually, and we've had a lot of leadership on the offensive line, and um, BJ Rowland really helps me out a lot. So um, we just we're really good at communicating and figuring out what to do. How about the physical part of it? I mean, we <clears throat> we play a lot of. Uh, even front defenses where you've got a guy plopped down on top of your head, and even front means both guards are covered, but you've got a guy plopped down on top of you, and you've got to deal with some of those big guys sometimes, right? Yeah, it's tough. you just got to stay low and keep driving your feet. Ask you one last question here. What, what would you say so far this season has been your, been your best game? Uh, I played really good against Gilmer. Uh, made the pancake breakfast. Um, made a few big blocks on this uh, drive. 
did a lot of trapping and a lot of kick-out blocks. All right, very good. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, good luck this week with picking. Certainly look forward to seeing you guys on the field Friday night. Stay right here back with more Catamount football in just a minute. Wood, 299. Wood, 159. Set. Mike Jones here, and you better bliss to Carpet Express. We have three-quarter inch hardwood for $2.99 a square foot. We have engineered wood for $1.59 a square foot. And to help you reach your goal to put wood in your home, Carpet Express is offering a 25 cent a square foot rebate. So rush into Carpet Express while supplies last, because everybody's out to get their quarterback. Have you ever heard the term, your eyes are your expressions, the windows to your soul? But when your eyelids look tired and they start to sag, it will make you look much older than you actually are. There is a simple surgical procedure called a blepharoplasty or eyelid tuck, which can help to rejuvenate and redefine the contours around your eyelids. It will even improve your fields of vision and a portion may even be covered by insurance. We can help redefine how others see you. Back to Catamount Football, and we've got another player guest. Welcome to the show. Introduce yourself, please. I'm Kelvis Rose. I'm number 21. I'm a sophomore. I play running back. All right, Kelvis, you're on here spotlight all by yourself. Just just great place to be for running back, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> all right, now talk to me about uh, this has been a uh, really kind of throwing you from the in, into the frying pan this season with, with with the number of carries you've gotten. You played some JV last year as a freshman and freshman football. And talk to me about the difference first in Friday night versus a Thursday afternoon or a Monday afternoon with the freshman. The atmosphere for a JV and a freshman game is like, you know, you get just a little taste of Friday night. I mean, like a first, like the first quarter. But on Friday night, the atmosphere is always live, and you always got the fans in it and the players. We always want to get hype and just get pumped up, and we always do a great job of that. How about the difference in in the players you're playing against? I mean, this is the speed of the game. Do you notice it a lot more? I mean, talk, talk about that aspect of it as well. Well, you got faster players and bigger players, so I have to adjust everything I do. I'm trying to get bigger and faster, so I have a lot of changing parts instead of JV and freshman where you kind of got, like, everybody at an equal level. You might have, like, one or two guys that are faster and bigger. You're well over 1,000 yards this year, I think 12, 1,300 yards, something like that. Um, how about the number of carries? Do, do you kind of get <clears> – <throat> it seems like as you get going during the game, the more carries you get, really the stronger you get as, as the game wears on. Uh, tell me about that. Um, the more carries I get, I kind of get more warmed up to the game. And I just, you know – Lathered I, up is the term <laughs> they, they use on TV a lot, right, for running back? <laughs> yeah. I kind of – I guess I get – you know, just get into it, and I get a feel for the defense, and I see how they're moving, and I can pick out the guys that are really trying to aim for me and the guys that are just trying to uh, run away. One thing I've noticed about your progression this year, early in the, early in the year, um, you made some – you might run into the back of a receiver or, or, or you know, hit the hole at, at, at a wrong angle. It seems like as, as you've gotten more carries and more experience, you're seeing those kind of – you're seeing those kind of things better. Tell me about that. Uh, I've been trying to pick up with the offensive line and with the coaches just how to read blocks better and just try to make better decisions for the team and for myself because mm -hmm. I don't want to put us in a bad position. Right. And I just, you know, I don't want to – I just want to make big plays all the time and just try to get us the best position. Now, one thing that's kind of become a, a trademark of yours has been that stiff arm. It's gotten, it's gotten pretty nasty. <laughs> Where would that come from? Well, Trey Beck taught me that last year and over the summer I worked with him a little bit and he's just been – He's been very vital to all the things I've been doing this season. He taught me a lot of things last year and just just been giving me good tips. So what's the what's the timing of that stiff arm? Huh? You just is it just well, a reaction or is it something you start <clears throat> thinking about? Well, once I see a guy coming in and I get a feel for it, I know like if his head is down, I'm just going to push it down. If his head is straight up, I'm going to get under his helmet and just push it straight up. And it gives him if I have control of his head, I can pretty much control his whole body. Right. Talk about the the. Certainly, the guys up front, <clears throat> and one other part of the running game is those receivers. I mean, they you know, we don't throw the ball a whole lot, and they do a great job of blocking downfield for you. Talk about the the guys that are leading the way for you. The guys up front, they do an awesome job. They really lead the way for me to get up to a touchdown and get as many yards as I've had so far. And the receivers, even though they don't get the ball 
much. They just show much love to me, and they just block their best, and they always want to get me the farthest way downfield. And when I bounce it outside, they know they have to read me, and I have to read them, and they just they do a good connection. One thing I've noticed with, with, with you guys, with the running backs, with you and Marvin and Jerry, and Marvin and Jerry are seniors, and, and <clears throat> obviously, you know, you're getting a lot more carries, but they seem uh, as excited for you when you score a touchdown as – and then I've seen you when they score. You guys seem to have a great relationship and and, and really uh, very unselfish and, and work well together, don't you? Mm -hmm. We don't we don't look at it as how many cares we have or how much playing time we get. We're a team and we always just want to stick together. We always we always want to help each other out and practice. We give each other challenges every week. You know, no fumbles. You know, you have to do this, you have to do that, and we always just want to help each other out the best way we can. And you got a couple of the defensive guys that flip over and lead the way for you, and in Robert Hardaway and Ed Mora. Talk about those two guys, because that's a that's a big in our offense. That's a big position. Those guys, they just come over and they bring the they bring the hard hitting of the defense over to the fullback position, and they just come in instead of you know angling the guy in or out, they just bust him in the mouth. For <laughs> Make it easy, right? No no choice. Just run right over him, step so, over his body. <clears throat> how about how about the um, you know, just thinking back over the now we've played nine games. What's been the what's been the biggest adjustment for you through through these first nine games, or maybe what's the thing you've learned most? Um, you know, through this first first full season as a running back. Coach Spark stressed to me all the time, and I'm still learning the process. Get my pads low. I've been running too high, and it's been causing defense. You know, hit me dead in my chest, and you know, just kind of knocking me out a little bit. Kind of hurts, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been try I've been trying to lower my pads and just trying to barrel through them. And then also give them an, also give them a look and try to make them miss. All right, well, very good. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, and you did a great job with those answers. So stay right here, back with more Catamount football in just a minute. No, no problem with the deadline. Yeah, our internet service connection flies now that we have OptiLink. You're the star with OptiLink from Dalton Utilities. Local customer service, lightning fast internet, stellar phone and television at affordable rates. I'd like to thank Mike and Brian and IT for making all of this possible as well as Helen and personnel and my great OptiLink installer. Don't you deserve the star treatment? Sign up with OptiLink today. With OptiLink, I'm the star. When the die Should be more than just a place to eat. Enjoy community, tradition, and unbeatable homestyle cooking at the Oakwood Cafe, located in historic downtown Dalton. Our food, fair prices, and friendly staff have made the Oakwood Cafe one of the fastest growing businesses in Georgia. We offer catering services that can bring our distinctive flavor anywhere. We also provide the opportunity to team up with us through franchising. Whether you're a newcomer or a regular, stop by and have the dining experience you've needed. Come feel at home with us at the Oakwood Cafe. Welcome back to Catamount Football and Coach Land. Uh, one thing we wanted to kind of cover this this uh, this show is talk a little bit about an update on our guys that are in college. Why don't you kind of go through who they are and where they are and how they're doing? Well, I have to count them off, so I'm gonna have to use my <laughs> hands. I'm a math teacher. We've got Ethan Bennett at Shorter College. All right. We've got Carter Crutchfield at Tennessee Tech. Jalen Fields at Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns. We've got Dante Thomas at Carson Newman. And we've got Corey Smith at Reinhardt. And we're still working on a couple of other guys from last year's team, uh, getting those guys into college. Uh, they're finishing up some qualifying. And then we've got Floyd Coffey at Eastern Kentucky. And uh, last, Kaylor Summers, our, our manager last year, uh, is at Jacksonville State University. And we've got William Sanchez that's a manager at, <coughs> that's at, right, I forgot for the that. Bulldogs. That's right, William Sanchez. What a, I mean, that's a great – before we talk about the football kids, that's a great way – uh, for a kid to go to college and be a part of that program is to be a student manager or a student trainer. No doubt. And, and I would say, I mean, you and I have been in the business world now quite a bit. Maybe the most valuable thing that they get out of that is the connections and the contacts that they make working in that athletic department. Either that or the sweatshirts and the shoes. That's right, or free clothes. Yeah, That's exactly right. You know, and we like that those guys <laughs> to bring those back, wear them and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, you know, these guys uh, get an opportunity to work with the team. 
They get to work with uh, the players. More importantly, they get to work with the coaches. Mm -hmm. And when you work with the coaches, just one little quick story, and I hope you don't mind me telling this, there's a chance. Um, th this summer, uh, Kayla Summers is going to be doing an internship with the New York Jets. And why? Because he's probably in there working, and you know, a scout comes in, takes him, the coach starts talking about how great of a job he's doing. Next thing you know, they're inviting him to come up because these guys all want reliable help. That's what they want, trustworthy help. And, and certainly Kaylor is one of those young men. And like I said, that, it's a great opportunity. Plus, some of these guys get the same scholarship benefits. Yeah. You know, Kaylor's on, uh, on a scholarship there at, at Jacksonville State. So, I mean, it, there's a lot of benefits that if you want to continue your playing days and you just have not quite been the athlete at that level that you'd like to be, great opportunity to kind of come in there and do something to support the team. And at the end of the day, you get the rings like everybody else. You get to make the trip right. like everybody else. And sometimes, though, you work a little bit harder. I'll and Tanner Carr's at Georgia Tech, too. We forgot That's about right. Tanner, one Tanner of our Carr. offensive linemen, working down there with Georgia Tech. So, That's right. <clears throat> just another avenue for those guys uh, to stay involved and get to college. But now let's talk about the guys that are playing. Right. Uh, kind of update us on, on those guys real quick. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of start at the old men, I guess you say. Uh, uh, Carter Crutchfield is playing wide receiver at Tennessee Tech, having a good, solid season. Uh, obviously, uh, they're, uh, they're in that Ohio, Ohio Valley Conference, won the conference championship last year, uh, and so he's doing, he's doing real well. Uh, Ethan Bennett is playing some free safety and strong safety at Shorter. So really found a home there. He went and ran track at Auburn for a little while, but found he missed football. Right. And so he came back and he's playing at Shorter. He's had a, a good, solid season there, special teams. And I think he's probably playing somewhere between five and seven series a game. So mm -hmm. that's a considerable amount of time. Um, and then the, the you know the, the most recent one that's really we, we've been watching a lot on TV uh, has been Jalen Fields for Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns. I mean uh, you know he he's had probably I think he's got three or four sacks on the season right now. And I don't know if anybody's seen him. He's six four, almost two hundred ninety pounds. Yeah. So I mean he is a, a, a hoss coming. He, he is now big. the great thing we had at Dalton was we had him on one side and on the other side uh, we had Floyd Coffee. And I went up uh, two weeks ago, carried some of our kids up for a recruiting visit, and got to see uh, uh, got to see Floyd play. Uh, Floyd's playing a lot on special teams. He's just a freshman this year. Obviously they shared the Ohio Valley Conference last mm -hmm. year with Tennessee Tech, and uh, he's playing. Uh, um, he, uh, the hybrid, it's kind of funny. For us, he was defensive end. And this is a good story to tell. We projected him to the college level as an outside linebacker. Now, the great thing about Dalton is when those coaches come in, basically they tell us, they say, what, where, where does this guy project for us, you think? And, you know, we tell them, we say, look, we had to have him at defensive end, but he's a hybrid guy. So we got some film of him during the summer playing in space, playing off the line of scrimmage, and uh, they signed him as an outside linebacker. He's up to 232 pounds, though. So I think they may work him back to the All defensive right. end if he's continuing to grow because his frame is now really beginning to fill out. Dante travels every week at Carson Newman, but they've been able to hold his red shirt. But uh, if, if they have any more injuries, Dante's probably going to be on the field, and they're really hoping to hold his red shirt. He's worked in playing at corner and, and doing you know, really, really well. Uh, Corey Smith is down at uh, Reinhardt, which is a new program. You're familiar with Reinhardt. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm telling you, if anybody's not – uh, seen their campus and seen their facilities. They'll start their season next year in the uh, the 2013 season. So they're having and, uh, lots of fun this year, just oh, pr practicing yeah, the whole year. Nothing <laughs> like just practicing and then not playing. So yeah, right. but hey, they're doing a great job down there, and uh, and he's having fun. And uh, you know, I think it's just a matter of of of, uh, of just seeing him continue to to work through that system. And uh, like I said, we're really proud of Corey. Corey's done a great job for us, and uh, last year, and and he's doing a great job for them. Absolutely, and hopefully we'll add three, four, five guys to that list this yeah. coming season. Um, we've got several guys, several seniors that, that, are, that are being looked at. We should at sign at least four guys this year. Find possibly, some homes for them. Possibly six. All right. excellent, excellent update. Thank All you. All right, great. Thank you. They're right here back with more Catamount football in just a minute. We got a hit. <laughs> Ah, here comes dinner! <laughs> I'm not eating that. There's no place like Outback for our perfectly grilled shrimp and new Royal Port Catch. I can't believe you guys didn't catch anything. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right.
Train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Get one-on-one -on -one training from former professional and collegiate players, featuring indoor baseball and softball training facilities, ground ball area, three pitching mounds, and four batting cages. Performance Sports Academy is also available for team rentals. Call 706-537-3169 today and train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Honesty, integrity, and hard work, leadership, quality, and value. Just a few words to describe the company and people that make up Shaw Industries. Shaw Industries, the world's leading carpet manufacturer, is proud to be a sponsor of Dalton Catamount Football. Shaw Industries, where great floors begin. Back on Catamount Football, we've got the highlights from Friday night. Uh, Coach Land, great atmosphere. I thought we had a tremendous turnout uh, by the Catamount fans. We did. Uh, this was a um, this was a uh, a group of um, kids that that you know were very inspired that night. It was very obvious that, that they came to play. Uh, I, I felt like our kids were ready to play. I thought we'd had a good week of practice. As I mentioned earlier, we had 12 kids out with the flu during the week. Uh, we did not play four starters. Uh, in our uh, just on our line, and then one of our receivers, uh, and um, came back and uh, just very proud of these guys. Roll out. This is the first possession. Cole does a nice job of, of uh, everybody was covered, tucks it, and and uh, picks up five or six yards. But we ended up having to punt three and out on that first possession. Great, great, another great solid job of, of uh, punting from Edder. Great snaps by Grant Sane. Come back and. <clears throat> It was obvious early on that even before the injuries to their two players that they were going to, uh, that they were going to try to establish an inside run game. Uh, we had worked for the most part during the week on the fact of how they would be running it. What they wound up having to change to created a little bit of a crease for us because of how we respect the pass. Great job here of our, of our um, uh, just our defensive front. Uh, you know, obviously we're a gap control defense, and as we've always been. And That's a slam tackle by Robert oh, Hardaway. Wham! We ain't joking. That's <laughs> WWE right That's there. That's right. I think we actually have that drill now. Here comes the counter option. Good read. Good pitch to Kelvis. Does a nice job getting inside and seeing they're the old stiff using arm. the stiff arm. That's, That's right. become a That's become a trademark for him this yeah, year. It really has. Nice little throw there to Chris Childs, and and Chris really uh, is aggressive right here, and whack. You know, does a nice job of, of taking the fight to the tackler, yeah, uh, and, and and really delivering the lick instead of instead of taking. It's a little bit of that defensive mentality. Well, that, that's that's what we work on. I watch Coach Parker down there yeah. with wide receivers. It's just really, and I think that's one thing our defensive guys brings. That's more of an aggressive style. Toss. There's Edder Moore leading the toss. BJ downfield. Good job of Kelvis putting both hands on the ball right there at the end. Uh, ball security. You see, there's good ground level shot by. Our illustrious cameraman Josh there getting us on the uh, on the toss. Comes a trap. Edder does a nice job of just really hitting it quick. And you see a big Juan Pacheco down there on one of the yeah. linebackers. That's a that's a key for the uh, that play to work is those offensive tackles get downfield and get on those linebackers. And that really and there's a, a that's where he got his by. angle rolled. Yeah, yeah another right toss uh, with with Marvin. The dart man. <laughs> yes, gets down to the. About the three-yard line. Here, here's Kelvis. Just stop. This was a dis disappointing drive. Very I mean, we, we went about, I don't know how many plays, 12 plays. That was a fourth down play and, and ended up turning over on the one-yard line. Good job right here, Leighton Reese and, uh, and uh, uh, the, the nose guard du jour uh, on that play, uh, Humberto Corona, that we had to put in there for the, uh, like I said, he senior getting a start, did a great job. He's a guy that's been waiting for some time. Good job right here, Jake Roberts stepping in there and uh, forcing the throw, and just a great job of Chris. As I said, Chris has really come along the last couple of weeks. He's really been working hard at practice. He's come and come up to me and asked me, you know, Coach, I want to stay a little after to do some extra stuff, and uh, it's, it's paying off. And that's the ones you want to see. see. Great job of, of, of uh, Chase Todd not giving up the contain, making him pull up and throw off his back heel. And once again, just a great job of our defensive back. And Coach Thompson does a great job of coaching those guys about reading receivers and their routes. And once again, good to see that excitement. Comes a toss, got BJ and, and Robert Hardway out in front, and Brandon Dale doing a nice job of blocking. You see uh, Hunter Nelson downfield and just picks up about 
15, 20 yards right there. Here's another look. Good job by Jake Roberts uh, of really setting the corner. He's the guy that makes that play go, the left tackle. This may have been my favorite play in the game because of how many guys were downfield, you know, and, 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 and just seeing guys trying to find somebody to hit. There's a trap. You see Robert Hardaway coming through there, Hayden Gross, and, and uh, I believe Chris Hisk is in there right now at tackle, or at guard. There's another toss for a touchdown. Toss sweeps, Kelvis does a great job of running that play, and, mm -hmm. and, and our guys, we'll run it both ways. We'll run it to the tight end, we'll run it to the, to the split side, and, and our guys do a great job of getting out in front of them. You see BJ, not a lot of teams have the ability to pull their center, and BJ does a terrific job of getting downfield, getting in front gift. of the play. And that's why a lot of colleges are looking at him yeah. right now. Receivers do a good job blocking. There's the extra point. So, 7-0, and, and literally, I mean, we've had three possessions in the first half. I mean, the yeah. clock just, just melted off. Yeah. yeah, they did a good job, as you mentioned earlier, about playing a real-time game. I mean, they mm -hmm. basically did not stop the clock for any purposes. And uh, What's a good, great job right here of our defensive front. Ewell Perez got some real playing time. He's another sophomore uh, that uh, this year has gotten more and more playing time that we're going to depend heavily on next year. Great job right here of Edder Mora. Flushing it wide and then getting that spillover from all the other group, uh, from all the other As people. he was getting tackled. And, yeah, yeah, that's right. But we didn't get that call. That's no, a we surprise. Didn't get that call. That's a surprise. Right they got him right there yeah, by the leg. There you go. Great job, though, of Ethan Fromm coming up and, and Robert Hardaway just played another outstanding game. But uh, uh, once again, just a great job right here of forcing uh, the quarterback to make a, to make a pull down and, and, and have to uh, try to just eat it. And uh, great secondary coverage you can see on our wide film. Good job right here of J. Rock Holt. Uh, they, they doubled J. Rock Holt most of the night last night. When they weren't doubling, they were trying to drive the, the nose into him. So uh, uh, he didn't have many tackles, but the ones he had were good. It was a great job here of Edder. You know, clearly we're a better team outside right now than we are inside. Uh, and uh, our, our goal was to try to force them outside. And just did a great job of uh, being able to do that on, on some certain place. Uh, particularly, it really is on two drives. We didn't do that that well on. Well, that's the end uh, of the but first half. Like yep. <laughs> end of the first half, uh, seven nothing, Catamounts. We'll be back with the second half highlights in just a minute. Got car problems? That's no problem for AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. Bring your foreigner domestic vehicle into AAA Transformers and have our certified master technicians perform the most comprehensive diagnostics over any other shop. AAA Transformers utilizes the latest technology so you can rest assured that you get the proper diagnosis the first time so only necessary repairs are made. Save time and money on all your brake, AC, tune-up, and transmission needs. All backed by the best warranty in the business. That's AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. When is the last time you have compared your car, life, or health insurance costs? At Advanced Insurance Strategies, we know your time is valuable. Therefore, we have developed AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. You can now go online anytime, anywhere, and get quick and easy quotes for your car, life, or health insurance from respected companies such as Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia, Assurant Health, Alliant Health Plans, and Drive Insurance from Progressive. Receive unparalleled customer service from a local insurance agency while using AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. AstroTurf is grateful to have been a part of this community over the last 40 years. And as Whitfield County has grown, AstroTurf has grown to be the leader worldwide in synthetic sports surfaces. Our assistance with the area parks and the new AstroTurf arena will hopefully show the community our appreciation. Soft, safe, and the most durable technology available today, AstroTurf, it's a new generation. This is not your father's AstroTurf. All right, Coach Lamb, we're back with the second half highlights and uh, some interesting plays in the second half and take over as we kick off here. Yeah, we, uh, <clears throat> we had uh, considered kicking away from number five most of the night, but we felt like that uh, uh, there were some limitations there due to his injury and uh, uh, just, you know, didn't know what his capability of and we wanted to see that early on. Great job right here of our, our defensive guys just, you know, coming out and 
Uh, you know, we really challenged them to have a three and out mentality. Great job of Edder coming up underneath the block right there, getting a crack block. Uh, so just a great job of Ethan Fromm supporting as our secondary support on the outside. Uh, come back, they run a little zone lead right here, and we just do a good job of, of, of just, uh, you know, just piling it up there in the middle. Defense forces a three and out, come back and, and had a good play here, but then ended up with the ball gets punched out and, and created a turnover, just not the way you want to start the second half as an offense. No, put us on our heels right here on about the 24-yard line, and, uh, uh, you know, they, they basically come back to work, and this is the only big play of the whole game, only play over nine yards that they had basically the whole night. And uh, we basically over-pursued. Our backside got cut off. And uh, great little running back, little scat back, and he's able to get up there and make the play. Good job of Edder right here securing the catch, and uh, but make something out of it. Uh, a little bit more here of where you know he, we allow him some <laughs> improvisational room, you know, because we know he's a he's a great football player, not just a guy that gives a lot of effort. Great job here. There's another trap that as the game wore on, Southeast really started trying to load up and stop stop us off the off the edge so the middle became more more of a, a place to run and uh, you can see we started trying to take advantage of that a little bit there's a belly play just a good hard run by Edder had some backside uh, penetration that, that really stopped that play nice throw and catch on the slant there to to Brandon Dale and um, set us up in great field position and uh, trying to take advantage of it again run a different route but just under throw un, under throwing ball a little bit and the southeast DB makes a good play on it for an interception so then they come back, and this is, um, you know, this is where I think their game plan began to take shape a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> you know, they began to work that wing and fold him underneath, basically getting an extra man in the box. Um, you know, it produced in us a situation that we had to, to do something that... Uh, similar to what Gilmer did. Exactly. It's, it's, it's the same, basically one of the, a very similar game plan. Uh, they just had a little bit more speed potentially. And so, like I said, you'll see us right here. And, but this is where the clock began to work to their favor as well. Uh, you know, they knew they weren't going to run the ball for a 20-yard gain. You know, they, I think they were aware that one play was probably their one big play. The outside threat was left just running a little bootleg, a little naked action right here. And, uh, you know, like I said, just a great job of Coach Gray pushing the ball, getting what they could, and then they had a great field goal kicker. Yep. Uh, we knew that going in, and he comes in and shoots a field goal and goes up basically 10-7 to 7 on us. <clears throat> Three and out um, by the off offense, but then a good punt by Edder uh, pins him down uh, inside the 20-yard line, down yeah, to, almost many, down to the 15. How many times have you read that story? Uh, exactly. I mean, just amazing. Just a great job of Edder. Good job of BJ right here, though. This is what we did better in the second half that we didn't do that good in the first, and that is making two people block our down linemen. And, you know, when they get – you'll see him. He just goes to his knees right there. When you're getting a double team, and that flushes that outside. And the execution of that was just, I mean, that's, that's exactly the way we drew it up at halftime. And those offensive guys did a good job of coming in. Great job of Lyle Durham. Lyle played a, a solid game after being out last week with the flu. Uh, he, he's beginning to get a little bit of his strength back. So we're able to force a, a, a three and out and uh, come back. And this right here is what we talked about. I mean, Brandon Dale's a player. And, uh, you know, players make these kind of plays when you got to have them. And uh, you know, we're sure glad that number 20 plays for us. Absolutely. Sets us up at the 25-yard line. And, uh, here's a replay of it. Good job by their kicker of getting it off, but nice low kick, very returnable. And, and Brandon good does a block right there. You see that right you know, there. Brandon does a nice job of fielding it and uh, sets us up in good field position. <clears throat> so that brings a lot of, you know, a return like that brings a lot of enthusiasm to the offense. And now here's a, after a penalty, uh, Robert Hardaway comes in and, and gets Trucks. some good blocking, but then he does it. Uh, a lot of this on his own, just a terrific run. Uh, yeah. Just, a, just to shows his determination and his will. And I know we'll have uh, probably a couple of replays of this because it's an outstanding effort uh, by Robert. And we ought to show it three times because there's a lot of things that I'd want to point out right. in this. There's two particular things on the play. Just watching Robert right here. This is why you work out. His body responded to what his heart was telling him to do right here. Second is look at that cheerleader, Taylor Bear. That's catamount spirit right there. She's telling him, come on, come on. And then last, I love the enthusiasm of our players. Oh. I don't want a penalty, but by gosh, I'm going to tell you, sometimes you need that right there in a the game. You remember Georgia did that against Florida. Uh, I don't think the, the – uh, <laughs> That's think right. The, it wasn't too good of an outcome, and isn't the, it? But, but our fans, fans are excited. Absolutely. you got to give them something to stand up and cheer for, man. Right. And, uh, boy, Robert sure did that, but our offense did that. He couldn't have got to that level to make that happen and hadn't been for those offensive linemen making those blocks. 
So still plenty of time left, 527. And, no doubt. Uh, Southeast comes back. The defense really responds here and, and, and does a nice job of taking it to them and not really giving them much of anything. Absolutely. And, and we've got a nice little addition that we've put into our, t our defense this year. has been uh, the, the, uh, the multifunctionality, I guess is the best way of saying it, of, 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 um, of uh, DVD, Devontae Davis. He's played linebacker for us now. He gives us a guy off the edge that really has speed now. He gives us an opportunity to have somebody that can now spy the quarterback on a running quarterback. Uh, it does mean we've got to take out one of our linebackers to get him in. But, man, what a great job. So they come back and, and punt to us. Defense does an outstanding job going back. This was more of their offense that they ran all year long was that spread look. Right. This is actually really the first game that they kind of got buckled down and ran a lot of inside on. So we got the ball back with, I, I think it was three or four minutes to go. Southeast had a couple of timeouts. And, we needed to have some first downs to end the game. And, Absolutely. Uh, nice job, good push up front by our guys, uh, picking up a first down right there, getting very close uh, to scoring. Uh, you know, you're kind of – it's kind of a tricky situation calling plays here. You don't really want to do anything to jeopardize the ball, but you also want to eat the clock. Well, we ended up turning over with three and a half seconds left, uh, and they got one last play, and that ended the game. Yep. Well, that was a <clears> – <throat> you're right, and at the end of the game, we, we had some mixed feelings about what to right. do, but we knew what we had to do was win the game. That right. was more important than in any way trying to uh, uh, <laughs> trying to score another touchdown or anything like that. 14 to 10 is the same thing as 21 to 10. That's right. So, well, good effort good effort by the kids to keep fighting and certainly good effort by Southeast. And uh, Stay right here. We'll be back with more Catamount football in just a minute. Wood, 299. Wood. 159, set, Mike Jones here and you better blister Carpet Express. We have three quarter inch hardwood for $2.99 a square foot. We have engineered wood for $1.59 a square foot. And to help you reach your goal to put wood in your home, Carpet Express is offering a 25 cent a square foot rebate. So rush into Carpet Express while supplies last because everybody's out to get their quarterback. Have you ever heard the term, your eyes are your expressions, the windows to your soul? But when your eyelids look tired and they start to sag, it will make you look much older than you actually are. There is a simple surgical procedure called a blepharoplasty or eyelid tuck, which can help to rejuvenate and redefine the contours around your eyelids. It will even improve your fields of vision and a portion may even be covered by insurance. We can help redefine how others see you. No, I'm not at home today. No, now I can have all of my phone calls forwarded and do all kinds of cool things now that I've signed up with OptiLink. You're the star with OptiLink from Dalton Utilities. Local customer service, lightning fast internet, stellar phone and television at affordable rates. I'd like to thank my mom and my friend Cassie and the phone guy from OptiLink. Don't you deserve the star treatment? Sign up with OptiLink today. With OptiLink, I'm the star. At Hamilton, quality drives everything. Coach, we've come to the scouting report segment. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the Pickens County Dragons. They're going to be coming to Harmon Field Friday night. Uh, good football team, right? Good football team, good boy peanuts. I had a buddy of mine that coached at, at Pickens <laughs> County over in Jasper. Yeah, they're, uh, uh, Coach Parker has got a, an outstanding team this year. Uh, they, uh, they put a lot of points on the board. And uh, they're, they're currently right now 6-3. and three. Lost to Gilmer, <clears throat> lost to River Ridge and uh, lost to Northwest. Northwest played them very early in the season, second mm -hmm. game of the season. Uh, lost 20 to seven. Um, they're, they're a team that's gonna look like a lot of the teams that we play. A lot of the teams we play. Um, and you can talk a little bit more about what you know, some of the, 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 the differences are, but for the most part, they're gonna be a 3-4 defensive front, gonna play some man coverage with a little cover three behind it. If, uh, if you're an old timey <coughs> football guy, 3-4, you can say the old 5-2, the old 50, that's the old right, 50 that's right. prime. As Coach Holcomb that, used to say. That Dalton ran for many right, years. That's right, the old 52, that's, that's right. right. And, and 
Uh, and they'll play it that way. Those outside linebackers look more sometimes like defensive ends than, than in our 4-4 in our four, four, where our outside linebackers are really defensive backs. There's a more defensive end looking, so uh, they're very big up front. To compare to somebody from the last scheme-wise, probably Cartersville, Ringgold. Yes. That, that yes. For, for somebody thinking, you know, that's what they're going to look like. And the size is very right. similar as well. Uh, may not have quite as much speed as, <clears throat> as a Cartersville, but I think comparing them to Ringgold is, is probably spot on from speed, athleticism, and size. They're very big up front. From an offensive standpoint, it's kind of, an, it's kind of a tale of two cities. Uh, they started the, the season off as a, uh, as a running team. Uh, a lot of, um, even though they were in a spread type offense, it was more of a spread run uh, where they were really getting downhill, a lot of zone reads. Quarterback is probably the best athlete on the field. He doesn't play much on defense. They maybe play two or three kids both ways. Um, as I said, big up front, but very athletic in their skill positions. But about three weeks ago, they've turned into a throwing team. And he threw uh, Cedartown uh, was a shootout. I mean, they beat them something like, you know, a 63 to 54 or something like that. He threw for 337 yards and then threw uh, the next week for another 300 yards. Mm. Uh, one of the receivers had 247 yards of receiving. Now, you and I have been doing football long enough to know you can kind of look in there and, and know that those typically when you get those tied totals, there's a couple of big plays that's probably making the majority. But watching the film – execute very well. Those linemen get foot to foot, and because they're so big, they make a great wall. He's got all the time in the world, so our defense is really going to have its, its work cut out for him, but it's going to be good to kind of get back to playing a peripheral uh, game as opposed to just kind of sitting there and getting pounded in the middle, although I'm sure they're going to watch our films, and we're going to get pounded in the <laughs> right. middle, so that, that's not going to surprise us if that happens. Win or go home situation, I mean, this is, this is not the playoffs, but it is the playoffs. It's really, it's really game one of the playoffs. I think that's the way that you know we've we've approached it the last three years or the last two years, and we will do the same thing this week. Uh, for us, when you have a sub-region schedule, the, unless you're the number one team, and that's why right. we all want to be the number one right. team. That's the only way to guarantee you a spot into the the the, the playoffs. Um, Otherwise, game 10 really starts your playoff season. You win, you go play the next week. If you don't, you pack your stuff up and get ready for the banquet. And, you know, we're, uh, so that, that's our mentality. We're in playoff mode, and, and that's the way we'll treat this, the seriousness of this team. Yes, they're a, a, you know, they're, they're a number uh, four seed coming in here, or number three seed, I should say, coming in here to see us. But we won't treat them that way. To us, they're the number one seed because they're playing like the number one seed right now. Absolutely. should be a – Tough, hard-nosed game, and uh, want to certainly invite everybody out to support the Catamounts Friday night. Yeah, I think the quarterback club is going to be doing some uh, some neat things this week, uh, and and this will be. We should say this for all practical purposes. This could be the last home game at Harmon. If we're fortunate enough to win this week and go into the playoffs the next week and 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 play in in, in, a, in a game there, the way the schedules now and the and the brackets are set up, if you're a third or a fourth team going in from your your sub from from your region. Uh, you won't pick up a home game until later in the playoffs. So, uh, strong likelihood that uh, that this could be a, at least our seniors' last game at Harmon Field. So, we definitely want these guys to come in, and, and so want to invite everybody to come out, and be loud and proud for sure. Absolutely. Let's take a quick quick break. Come back with more Catamount football. A restaurant should be more than just a place to eat. Enjoy community, tradition, and unbeatable home-style cooking at the Oakwood Cafe, located in historic downtown Dalton. Our food, fair prices, and friendly staff have made the Oakwood Cafe one of the fastest-growing businesses in Georgia. We offer catering services that can bring our distinctive flavor anywhere. We also provide the opportunity to team up with us through franchising. Whether you're a newcomer or a regular, stop by and have the dining experience you've needed. Come feel at home with us at the Oakwood Cafe. We got a hit. Ah, here comes dinner. <laughs> I'm not eating that. There's no place like Outback for our perfectly grilled shrimp and new royal port catch. I can't believe you guys didn't catch anything. 
Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Got car problems? That's no problem for AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. Bring your foreigner domestic vehicle into AAA Transformers and have our certified master technicians perform the most comprehensive diagnostics over any other shop. AAA Transformers utilizes the latest technology so you can rest assured that you get the proper diagnosis the first time so only necessary repairs are made. Save time and money on all your brake, AC, tune-up, and transmission needs. All backed by the best warranty in the business. That's AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. Train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Get one-on-one -on -one training from former professional and collegiate players. Featuring indoor baseball and softball training facilities, ground ball area, three pitching mounds, and four batting cages. Performance Sports Academy is also available for team rentals. Call 706-537-3169 today and train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Honesty. Integrity and hard work, leadership, quality, and value. Just a few words to describe the company and people that make up Shaw Industries. Shaw Industries, the world's leading carpet manufacturer, is proud to be a sponsor of Dalton Catamount Football. Shaw Industries, where great floors begin. Well, Coach, we've come to the end of another show. Hard to believe we've uh, right. done nine of these things now. That's right. Hard but kind of, kind of wrap this up a little bit. Uh, certainly, exciting win, you know, for our kids last week. But more importantly, moving forward, uh, looking forward to Friday night at Harmon Field, right? Well, it is, and, and you know, as we talked about in the last segment, the, the playoffs are a special time here at, at Harmon Field, and. Uh, we will be treating this as the playoffs, and uh, I'm just excited. The quarterback club always just is outstanding and goes beyond the, the call of duty. The moms and dads are outstanding. Uh, the band has done just phenomenal this year, uh, uh, and, and, and our student body. I, I've, just, I've been so impressed with them over this last year, uh, just watching them progress and become from, you know, just – Five guys with painted shirts, you know, to our six guys. To now we've got, you know, a whole line, you know, and the and the girls are getting into the action and uh, just our student body, the way they. And my, my, I just want to tell Brooke Johnson, who heads up our pep club, Tammy Fleming and Shakisha, Shakisha Love, uh, they just do an outstanding job uh, with our cheerleaders and our pep club, and uh, uh, just really appreciate all they do. And I'm telling you, we, we, we everybody works hard to make this catamount machine roll, and. We appreciate it, and the and the, the players appreciate what they do for us. I know the kids will be excited excited for Friday night. It just that <clears throat> even though it's not technically the first round of the playoffs, it just brings a little different atmosphere. It brings a lot more electricity, uh, a lot more excitement. You know, practice will be maybe have a little bit more step in their in their There'll giddy up pep. this week. That's right. No doubt, there'll be more pep. Yep, there'll so. be more pep. I want to make sure we invite everybody out and say thanks for watching Catamount Football. And we will be, we will be back next week, same cat time, same cat channel.